You told me about your style was different than everybody else at one point. <laughs> tell well, me. actually, I'm not a musician, you know. I just have attitude, man. I just play the way that I like to play. I can feel it, the rock, you know. at the radio station, right? So, and he decided to uh, put a band together, and he asked me if he, if I played something. I said, oh yeah, I can play the guitar, actually light, because I never played anything for never, never touch an instrument. Then I met this guy, he was supposed to be the bass player, so, and the very first thing when we got together, to have a rehearsal, the singer, me, and I'm supposed to play the bass, or the guitar, and the other guy in the bass, they realized I didn't know how to play. So the guy just offered me his bass, goes like, oh, you can have my bass just for a string, you know? It would be much better than the guitar. The guitar has six, six strings. So, <laughs> from that day on, man, I, I start to play, you know, to learn a little bit. And uh, it's been like uh, 42 years. Oh. How old were you? I was like eight. 18, 19 years old, I guess. So three years later, the band became a uh, success. What was the name of the band? Camisa de Venus. Then uh, I learned to play on stage because I never played it before. How did you learn English? In New York, when I went there in 1989. I was the only white guy, Brazilian, and the, the rest of the band was Jamaican, and the, uh, the drummer was from uh, Trinidad Tobago, his name is Ricardo. The band called uh, Mother Last and the Mary Knight. So, like I said, I never spoke English before, and I started to learn Jamaican with them, you know. <laughs> You bumbo cloud land man, first come the music, the second one pussy. You know? <laughs> Quando eu acabar aqui eu te dou uma ligada, a gente combina alguma coisa, beleza? Pô, eu esqueci do cara completamente, velho. Tell me about uh, what happened in New Orleans. Oh man, well, I think New Orleans for me one of the best crazes place ever. You know, I'd be in Amsterdam, I'd be around, you know, but New Orleans is the only place. Actually, 
New Orleans is not American, you know. People who live in New Orleans, the American people who live in New Orleans, they don't give a shit for their American way of life. There is everything school, man. I mean, the food, they have like a culture there, right? The red beans and rice. Is, uh, there's a kind of uh, very similar where the, or, uh, very similar where the, like the place where I come from, where I was, I was born in Bahia. In New Orleans and, and Bahia, Salvador is the same shit. And New Orleans is very laid back, you know, kind of lazy town as my town, Salvador. And the music, the, oh, there is a mix we have here uh, in Bahia, in North East Brazil. We have uh, forró. Okay, forró played by the big drum, right? The big drum, the accordion, and the triangle. And the rhythm, exactly the fucking same as the Zydeco in New Orleans. The only difference, uh, they have uh, the blues guitar, Zydeco, right? This, the rhythm is exactly the fucking same shit, man. But they only have the guitar, the blues guitar, plus the other uh, rhythm is Cajun. It's the same shit with the violin. And they have an, a French accent, the Creole. I met very cool cats, you know, the, all the musicians. I got to know people, good musicians, play with them, jam with them. Then we put the band together over there, I met this guy in New Orleans, and then we played together like for almost three years. What's the name of the band? The blues band, uh, Bad Apples, in New Orleans. Just, you know, just to make a lot of show, man. Play it every fucking night. A Thursday through Sunday, like, was like, religious, you know. Tell me about your bar. Well, you got money from the bank, you know, uh, bank one. <laughs> What's funny because, uh, uh, well, so three, four months later, Katrina hits the, the city, right? Hurricane Katrina was the worst one so far. I left like two days before when I decided to come back to New Orleans. New Orleans was big mess, was upside down, the whole thing was upside down. Literally was the whole thing upside down. And the bank goes like, okay, if you still open, you still own the, uh, the payment, right, the monthly payment. If you close the bar, we done. Kind of honesty, right? Something like that. Can I say that? Honesty? Honesty. Honesty. Amnesty. Amnesty, yeah. Okay. So they did. We did. We decided to do this. You lost everything in Katrina? Uh, oh, yeah, everything. <laughs> I didn't get the chance to, uh, to get the money back because I was illegal. <laughs> I was illegal, man. So that's, that's why I lost everything. Illegal enough for the bank to give you uh, a loan? Well, once you, have, once, <laughs> once you have a social security number, you can do it. Well, I never did anything wrong. Nobody does. Yeah, but that was, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, I'm not a criminal. I was working every fucking day, uh, like a fake social security number, you know, to have a driver's license and uh, bank account and everything. It was, I was legal. Besides the, you know, the illegal, the illegal <laughs> shit, social security number. But I never did anything wrong. <laughs> what happened next? What was, so what did you do? a month later, I decided to come back to Brazil. I used to work as a tech producer for all the international shows in Brazil. 
besides the, the band Camisas de Venus. Always, uh, I've been doing this for more than 27 years. So, all the big bands like Bob Dylan, Rolling Stones, all the big bands come to Brazil. I used to work for this big company here, and they hired me to, uh, to deal with the band, right? As a tech producer. Do you miss America? No, America, New Orleans. Tell me about Stick Bob. Well, Stick Bob because, oh, all right. And the beginning of the last year, uh, I start to make some uh, WhatsApp stickers, you know, the, like a personalized one, stickers for WhatsApp. And then I opened this uh, new account, uh, Instagram, to sell it then as a stick bob because the sticker and bob is my nickname what happened well i was well uh i sold a lot man why'd you stop i actually i don't like social media <laughs> i hate it. why well, it, you know i have things better to do i guess are you anti-social huh are you anti-social a little bit yeah <laughs> no. Far from it. Huh? You're far from antisocial, I don't know that. Yeah, I think so too, you know. I know. Opposite. I know I do. What do you feel when you're painting? Oh, I just go out of space, you know. I just put some views. And Stop think about shit. What sort of shit? Just let it go, you know, just... I don't know how can I describe that feeling. Because it kind of... I feel like I don't care about anything, just what I'm doing now. Do you see similarities between uh, playing your bass and, uh, and... Yeah, the way that I do, yes. And the painting, the process, anything similar? Well, because that? I like to do both the way that I do, you know. Mm -hmm. As I told you before, I don't... I don't... Uh, I'm not a musician, like a professional musician. I'm just playing the bass and play rock and roll. And the paint, I think, is the same thing you do with my... Because I like to do it, you know? I feel like to do it. Uh, some people goes like, wow, looks beautiful, very professional. Some other guy goes like, oh, looks like shit. <laughs> you're not a painter or you're not a bass player. I say, fuck you, fuck you. I don't give a shit, you know? I think anybody can do anything, man. Anything. <laughs> 